the power arm. That's the arm that dominates. That's the arm that captivates. That's the arm that control. In that first arm, witchcraft is where you get people that control people. They don't have to use spells, but they control people. According to Galatians 5, it's a work of the flesh. You can take you into that witchcraft area. In addition to that, it's also the people that work the dark arts. That's the witchcraft. That's the power arm. That's the arm that Satan used to control people. It's the same three things that was used in the garden against Eve. If you delineate it and look at it closely, it's that same three temptation. And it's the same three temptation that Jesus dealt with in the New Testament when he overcame the devil. It's the same three. Witchcraft, divination, and sorcery. And I'll explain uh, uh, clearly again. Witchcraft is the power arm. That's the arm that dominates. That's the arm that captivates. That's the arm that controls. That's the arm that manipulates. The second is divination. Divination is the, uh, um, the knowledge arm. That's the arm where the people that are false prophets get information from other spirits. Their the word is divine. You hear the word diviner in there. Divination. That's the arm that seek knowledge. That's the arm that seek esoteric knowledge. The word esoteric means secret knowledge. Eve wanted knowledge that God didn't give her. That's the witchcraft knowledge. So that arm is the arm that has everything to do with your psychics, your people that communicate with the dead, your people that are mediums, all that is under the arm of divination, which means to divine, it means to get knowledge. So the first arm, witchcraft, is the power arm. The second is divination, which is the knowledge arm. And the third arm is what's responsible for most of the violence. And my God, I'm hearing God now. This will help you as you deal with the gang members. I'll tell you what spirits are in them. So the third arm is sorcery. Sorcery has to do with anything that creates a physical contact. Meaning if somebody pray over a ring and bring it to a witch doctor and the witch doctor tell you to put this ring on this woman and you'll marry her, that is sorcery. That's a physical thing that creates a physical contact. Just like in the book of uh, uh, Joshua, that uh, uh, a cursed thing that Achan took created a physical contact. That's a form of sorcery. Sorcery also encompasses music. I'm going to get back to that in a second, and that's going to blow your mind. But anything that creates a physical contact is uh, uh, sorcery. And sorcery is basically the catalyst for the violence you see in the streets, and I'll explain it. Sorcery also works in music. When the witch doctors wanted their spirits to come give them information, when they wanted their spirits to divine for them, so in order for the spirits to divine for them through divination, they had to conjure the spirit up through sorcery. Sorcery brought in the divination, and I'll explain it. Uh, they started with the music. This is why they would beat the drums. The music invited the spirits out. If you go to the book of Revelation, it tells you about spirits that come up or spirits that have not come up. And there's biblical evidence that there's spirits that are not released until they are summoned by people on the earth. So that arm sorcery um, is related to music. And the music is the thing that gets in the heads of these kids. This is why there's a genre of music out of Chicago called drill music. I did an interview with a young man before in my professional capacity. And the young man says to me, Milt, we're not killers. But when we need to go and do a drill, a drill is when they go either rob, shoot, or kill somebody. He said, when we need to do a drill, we smoke the weed and we play the music. So the music takes them to a place where they are taken over and they do things that they will not normally do. That's sorcery. Now, that sorcery arm is not just music. Sorcery is also drugs. Remember I said physical contact? Uh -huh. Drugs is a form of sorcery. In fact, the word pharmakia and sorcery and drugs are the same word. It's pharmakia in the Greek. 
It's the same word that we get the word pharmacy from or drugs. That is the same word as sorcery. So you see how this thing ties together. The kid has said they have to use drugs and play the music. Two forms of sorcery in order to go kill another black man. In order to go take another life. They had to use two forms of sorcery. Play the music and take the intoxicants, whether it's marijuana or alcohol. So you see how sorcery works. Sorcery has to do with the physical contact, which includes cursed objects, which includes music, and which includes drugs. And the natural progression of rebellion is to go into one of those three areas. And a clear historical evidence of that you remember the, 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 the hippie generation? They're all rebellious against their parents, right? right? That's a historic fact. What did they do? Drugs. That was the generation that did drugs like no other because that's the natural progression or in this case, the natural digression. And what else did they do other than the drugs? They started this almost spiritual music. The music, yeah. yeah. And what did it lead to? David Koresh and those guys, it led to violence. So remember I said I'm going to show you how sorcery is responsible for most of the violence nowadays? I've cast out spirits out of young men that said they came in through hip-hop. Hip-hop and rap music are actually different. Rap is a style. Hip-hop is the culture. Now this is... This is a uh, 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 language for you to minister to the young men that are in the gangs. Rap is the music. Hip hop is the culture. That's the culture that says don't talk to the police. That's the culture that says if someone disrespects you, you kill them. That's the culture that says rob. That's the culture that says steal. That's the culture that says kill. You hear the three? Steal, kill, and then obviously destroy. So in that hip hop culture, you'll find the spirits in the young men. And this is evidentiary. This is something that my wife and I dealt with. This is not mm -hmm. abstract theory. We've seen this with our own eyes. We've cast the spirits out. Nearly 100% of the young men that you are now going to minister to, the chief spirit in their life will be rejection. Rejection will be the catalyst for every other spirit in their life. It's going to be almost always the case. Because when a child is rejected, what happens next is you have when rejection from the parents. You have now self-rejection when they reject themselves. This is why they hate themselves, want to hurt themselves and do destructive things. You have rejection of parents. You have rejection of authority. This is why they don't get along with the law. And then ultimately you have rejection of God. So you have the parents rejecting the child. Then the child rejects themselves. And then the child rejects the parents. Then the child rejects, rejects authority. And then the child rejects God. So rejection will be in nearly every one of those young men that you deal with. And rejection is a doorkeeper. Rejection opens the door. And these that I'm going to name are the spirits in the young men that cause them to kill another black man. And I've dealt with them. I've seen them face to face. I've seen what they look like in people's faces. They don't like me and I don't like them. The spirits are violence, viciousness, brutality, hatred, and murder. You'll find them in almost all of the young men that are in gangs because in order for them to kill, those spirits have to be in place. And obviously as well, you'll find the spirit of murder. And the spirit of murder don't come in them because they have killed somebody. It comes in them to make them kill somebody. This is why Christians have in them, some Christians in churches have the spirit of adultery in them, yet they have not committed adultery. They have it, and the spirit in them forces them to commit adultery. And how can that be true? Very simple. The spirit of suicide don't come in after you're dead. It comes in to make you kill yourself. 
Does that make sense? So you'll find in these young men, violence, viciousness, brutality, murder, um, rage is also one of them. But violence, viciousness, brutality, and murder will almost always be in them. And I've dealt with some of them personally. I'll have conversations with the young men and they'll talk to me like we're best friends. But when they're out on the streets, it's almost like they become a different person and something take them over. And that's exactly what it is. Something else take them over. Another personality take them over. But that will help you tremendously. It will show you the area to pray in. Violence, viciousness, brutality, and murder. And most of the time, it come in through rejection or a form of sorcery, but more likely than not, it's going to be rejection because you'll find that the young men come from uh, homes generally where they're not loved or there's no father in the home. And when there's no father in the home, then the child feel rejected. Why don't I have a dad? What did I do to make dad leave? Was it me? So the kids start asking themselves this question. And after a while, the spirits start whispering those questions in their ears. And before you know it, they start accepting what they hear. And then they transition. And this is how our young men, this is how our sons can kill each other because they're influenced by 